this tip, this tip right here. I feel like if you learn how to do this, you would never really feel lonely ever again. Hello, I'd like to share with you a few ways that you can be alone without feeling lonely. And as the world becomes increasingly connected, it's very easy to do the exact opposite, become disconnected. My name is Himmel, and if you're someone that's struggling with this feeling of loneliness, then I feel you. First of all, I think it's really important that we understand the difference between being alone and feeling lonely. One of the sentences that I found that kind of like puts this all together is this one right here. Being alone is a physical state of being, whereas loneliness is an emotional state of mind. Now, what this would mean is that you can, one, you can be alone without feeling lonely, and two, you can be surrounded by people yet still feel lonely. Ultimately, if we want to combat these feelings of loneliness, then we have to understand that it exists in the mind and therefore requires a mind shift. As I was doing my research for this video, it basically boiled down the feeling of loneliness to this one thing right here, which is not having meaningful relationships. The type of relationships where there are trust, understanding, acceptance, and all those other nice things. And it's really interesting because it's funny how we can connect with so many people through social media, through apps, and yet no matter the followers, the matches, the amount of people that we engage with online, we can still feel like there's this empty void that something is missing. You know what I'm talking about, right? That's like that feeling that it's just something, something's not there. So here are three things that I feel like have really, really helped me on my journey to not feeling lonely and being comfortable with being alone. Now, keep in mind, I'm not a psych or anything, but these are techniques and strategies that I know have worked really well for me and I know have worked a lot for other people as well. The first thing is, and this applies to a lot of things, not just loneliness, but remind yourself that this too shall pass. It's like allowing yourself to stand apart from the experience. Because when we are right in the middle of it, when we're right in the rut, when we feel like, you know, no one's really caring about us, you know, we feel quite alone and we don't know what it is that we, that we, that we, that we want to do and we don't know why we feel sad, then it can almost seem like those feelings will last forever. When we are in this state of mind, it's really important that we ask ourselves, have I ever experienced a tough time before? a difficult time before and the like, likely answer would be that yes you know you have experienced a difficult time before and then you ask yourself the second question which is did that pain that you were going through in that tough time did it last forever and the chances are to that question you'll answer no it may seem like a really simple thing that you are doing but what it's doing is is that it's subtly convincing yourself that you can go through whatever it is that you're going through right now and you can make it out on the other end and you'll be just fine because you've done it before. Like if, if you've done something before, then by all means you can definitely do it again. So give that a go, see if that works. Now the second thing, focus on depth of connection over breadth of connection. Here's this quote that I wanna share with you that really hits this point home. I define connection as the energy that exists between people when they feel seen, heard and valued when they can give and receive without judgment and when they derive sustenance and strength from the relationship. So you can have a lot of friends, but if you don't have a deep connection with them, then it's not gonna be fulfilling. Those aren't gonna be fulfilling and meaningful relationships. A deep connection with someone or a group of people can give you that really strong sense of support. And it can be that crutch that you need when you're going through a really tough time. Now you may be asking after this, okay, cool. So how do I develop this depth? How do I focus on depth rather than breadth of connection? Well, the answer to this is vulnerability. Right? Before you leave, just hear me out. I know vulnerability can be really scary because we've opened up our hearts and lives to other people before, only to be left heartbroken and disappointed, whether it be with a significant other, a friend, a mentor, a parent. But I'm telling you, a true depth of connection is going to take a little bit of a leap of faith. Now, good news here is, is that you can choose how big you want this leap to be of vulnerability. Though I would not recommend opening up to someone completely and releasing the floodgates and releasing all of your emotional baggage onto this person. Because I don't think that's good for not only you, but I don't think that's good for the other person either. But what I am saying is maybe your leap can actually just be a step. Open up just like a, just like a wee bit, just like a small little bit. And as you dive deeper, the stronger and more meaningful your connection will become. Then the relationship that you end up having can be a relationship that you actually draw a lot of strength from. 
And to be honest, you'd actually be surprised just how when you open up a little bit, how much more comfortable that other person is. This is what gives a lot of a lot of joy and a lot of like meaning to life like you like you know when those you know those days that when you just end up hanging out with your friends like really late into the night and you just end up talking about you know life and struggles that you've been through and all these different things that has been happening in your life that's that's what i live for and i'm sure that's what a lot of us live for as well like more conversations like that that are deep meaningful and are like in t- to, to some extent like quite rare these should be had more often. That's where it's like these relationships become incredibly fulfilling. And keep in mind, like I said, like this stuff, it's it's scary. But if you wanna build a strong connection with someone, you have to talk about your emotions. You have to talk about what you've been through, what you've been struggling with. The only way to trust in someone is to, I suppose, take that first step. As you develop that confidence in yourself and in the relationship, then you can kind of like slowly, slowly climb, climb that ladder and see where you go, see what happens. Okay, and the last one, number three, is the most important one, in my opinion, and that is to befriend yourself. This tip, this tip right here, befriend yourself. Like, I'm not a professional or anything, but I feel like if you learn how to do this, you would never really feel lonely ever again. My job, it's an interesting one. It's filled with experiences, which include a lot of driving and meeting people right across the country. And I absolutely love it. I get to tell stories that take people to like the heights of happiness, but also the depths of sadness, all with hopes of giving people new perspectives and changing their lives for the better. But it does have its drawbacks. It's a lot of traveling and most of it, it's done alone. Sometimes I travel to gigs that are like three, four hours away and I'd have to drive back on the exact same day. Being in this field of being a speaker and somewhat an entrepreneur, can get quite lonely. And I remember a good mentor of mine said this, when you're in this type of field, you have to be your own best friend. And when he first said that to me, I like kind of brushed her off like it was nothing. But as the weeks, months went on by, I realized I actually started feeling quite lonely. And then I got to a point where I realized he was right. I'm on the road alone so many of the time. When I get on stage, I speak and then I finish and I go home after that. And it's it's tough because there's no real people that you are connecting with at a really deep level. And so what you're kind of left with is yourself most of the time. I have to be my own best friend. Now, I don't think this really just applies to me. I think this applies to everyone. I mean, we all need to have a connection with ourselves because at some point in time, there's going to be days, weeks, months where we are going to feel alone. In fact, more often than not, we are actually going to be alone physically. People aren't going to be around us. More often than not, you've got to be the one to point yourself in the right direction. And if you get heartbroken or disappointed, then you're the one that's going to have to pick up the broken pieces like of your heart. Maybe that's slightly dramatic, but I can't put it together any better than this. The most important relationship you have in life is the one you have with yourself. So where do you start befriending yourself? Where do you begin? Well, you would do what you would do with anyone that you are trying to build a relationship with. Spend some time alone by yourself. Be vulnerable, be honest, face your fears, know your weaknesses. Spend time doing things that you would enjoy alone. And slowly but surely, you'll become your own best friend. And the best part about this is, in the quietest and darkest of times, you will always be there for yourself. And at the moment, if you feel like nothing is there, then maybe it's time to start searching. My friend, I wish you all the best and I hope you find meaningful connections, not only with other people, but with yourself as well. If you haven't already, give this video a like and give us a sub too if you found this video worth your time. Here's another video that you just might like. But other than that, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Catch you later. Bye.